All right, to make the cast press canoodle, I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil to this preheated pan, and a little bit of butter. All right, once your butter's pretty much all melted, you're gonna go in, add your onions. All right, we're just gonna cook these over a medium heat till they're nice and soft. Try not to get too much color on them. All right, once your onions are nicely soft like that, we'll set them aside to cool, while we get the rest of the ingredients together. Now that I've got all my ingredients together for the, the canoodle, I got my dried bread cubes here that I pre-made from the shop because, you know, drying your own bread takes so long. And now to that, I'm gonna add milk. And here's where it comes into a, a very different from other dumplings that you make here in Austria. It's got eight eggs in this recipe, which I am making a bigger batch, but still, that's a lot of eggs to be going in. Also to this, I'm gonna add in some chopped up parsley. We're going with one teaspoon pepper, that much salt. About three quarters of a tablespoon, that is. Going with a teaspoon of dried margarine. And also the elephant in the room, the cheese sitting next to here. So I've gone with a 50-50 mix of Emmentaler. And in Austria, you get what's called Bergkäse, which is just mountain cheese. Now, if you're anywhere else in the world, apart from, I would say, Germany or Austria or Switzerland or somewhere like that, just go with like a Swiss cheese that you could get, or you could just go all Emmentaler, something like that. But we're gonna go ahead and all that cheese goes in. We're gonna bung in the onions that are uh, that super cooled on my balcony outside because it's full snow and ice out there at the moment. We'll get all those in. Now there's only one more thing to do. That's just to get in there and get it all mixed together. Now you could use a spoon, but the best way to feel for texture and if you have enough moisture in there is just to do it with your hands. So you have to start off kind of slow, even though this is quite a large bowl. And uh, once the bread starts hydrating, it will uh, reduce in size. Well, in volume, we would say. We're just gonna cover it with a damp towel and just let it rest on the bench for about 10, 15 minutes. So I've let the mixture sit aside and then all the bread should be hydrated. Now also, when you're making bread dumplings or you know, rolling anything, even meatballs, wet hands. It makes it so it doesn't stick to your hands so bad and it just makes for a, I'll have a better experience. So with this dumpling, instead of putting them into bowls, how they usually are, these ones are a little bit different because we're not boiling these, we actually pan fry them. You actually wanna flatten them into a bit of a patty shape, something like that. So we'll go ahead and get a couple knocked out, then we'll head to the stove. Okay, so in the pan, I'm gonna put some butter. I'm just gonna put a little bit of neutral oil, just so the, uh, the butter doesn't burn while we cook these. So once this is get all melted down, we'll get the uh, dumplings in. All right, the butter's pretty much melted down. So we're gonna go ahead and set the dumplings in. We're just gonna cook this over a medium heat till they're nicely cooked through. Once they've got a nice color on one side, go ahead, give it a flip, so we get some cooking on the other side. Now once your dumplings have got nice color on both sides like this, you're gonna remove them to a plate, line it with some paper towel. Let's give these a taste. Mmm. I better, uh, you know, have another bite just to make sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So traditionally, you would have these dumplings with either a salad or in a soup, but I've got another idea. Okay, for the pork, I've already gone along and scored the, uh, the fat cap. And this one come with some bones, which you should always buy your pork with some bones. And I've gone ahead and already removed those. And there was a few bits of the, you know, white cartilage bits that I've also removed out that was underneath this flap. Okay, so now we're just gonna go ahead and season the underside of the meat to start with, which I'm just gonna put some salt on there quite liberally. Also, don't forget to put some on the sides. And I'm gonna be using this seasoning from Sonnentour. It's called Rub Me Tender. I don't actually know all the, the full list of ingredients, but I've used this plenty of times before. I also use it a lot on uh, vegetables when I smoke them. It's quite a good all round seasoning. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that patted into the meat, just on the bottom side for now. And then the leftover bits in there, we're just gonna rub up with the, with the sides. Okay, on the top, I'm just gonna wipe off any of the rub, because I don't want any rub on there. And you want this, fat cap to be super super dry that's going to help it get it nice and crispy now usually with a pork belly i'll leave it in the fridge overnight to dry it out properly with some salt and all that sort of stuff on there but i didn't do that this time and we'll see if it turns out just as good as you can see i'm going to be cooking this on a rack this pork belly and these are all the bones and the cartilage i, I pulled out of it now to get nice even crispy skin on top this needs to be lying perfectly flat so once i pick this up and i get my little rack in there and i plop it in I can use the bones that are cut out of it to shove under the, the spots that are too low and that'll prop it up so it's in one nice even layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that done and then we'll come right back. Once you got your pork belly nice and flat, I'm just gonna apply a bit of neutral oil. In this case, my neutral oil of choice is peanut oil, as always. So you don't want a whole bunch, you just wanna pour a bit over, spread it on nice and evenly. This will also help with the crispiness of the skin. After you've done that, you just wanna hit it with some salt. Last thing you wanna do before you bang it in the oven, you just want to apply it 
just a little bit of water. You just want to put enough in just so it covers the bottom. You want to stick this into a 150 degree preheated oven until it reaches around 70 degrees. And then we'll, uh, we'll bump up the temp and we'll get this skin nice and, uh, nice, and, nice and crackly. So, we'll come back then. Okay, for the braised cabbage, I've already got ahead and sliced up my cabbage and grated some apples. So in my pot, I'm just going to add some oil. Also, I've already heated the pot up a little bit. And to that, we're going to add some salt and some pepper. You could also just use fresh cracked black pepper, but I have this little uh, pepper mix here. And also, I'm going to add some sugar. So we'll go ahead and get that all mixed up until the sugar's melted, and then we'll start adding, adding the cabbage. Uh, once your sugar's like that, and it's nearly turning into a caramel, you could say, you're gonna start adding handfuls of cabbage at a time. And when, once you add it in, and you get it mixed in, you add the next handful. So once you add the handfuls of cabbage in, you just wanna start mixing around until it all turns glossy like that. You can add your next handful and mix it in. And once that turns glossy, we'll add the next one. Now, I know my pot might seem a little bit too small for this uh, job, but trust me, this cabbage will cook down and it'll be big enough. So now all your cabbage is added and it's all nice and glossy. Go ahead, bung in all of the apple and we'll go ahead and get that mixed in. All right, once you get all the apple mixed in, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a touch more salt because, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of cabbage in there that needs to be seasoned. And then at this point, you could add some apple juice or I'm gonna be using this stock I bought from the supermarket. This is uh, called Wild Fond, so we'll see how it goes. All right, now we're gonna stick this back on the stove. We'll bring it up to a simmer and we'll keep it there for the next hour or so. I've just temped my pork. I've no longer had it's been in there for maybe an hour and a half, but it's temping right where I need it to. So now, just carefully, we're just gonna rearrange the bones again to make sure that it sits perfectly flat. And I've already gone ahead and turned my oven right up. So the heating element on top is on full whack. And I'm gonna put this as close as that element on top of my oven as possible. And we'll get this nice puffed. So once you've got a nice puffed crackle like that, you're gonna let it rest. Cause if you touch it now, it doesn't feel super hard and crackly, but as this cools down a little bit and rests, it's gonna get nice and crispy. Also, I didn't explain before, you wanna put the water in the bottom of the pan, so when the fat drips down, it doesn't burn on the bottom of the pan. And then you can turn this into a nice little pan sauce, if you wish. Okay, so the cabbage has been cooking away for about an hour there, and it's ready to go. It's nice and soft, just have to taste it for seasoning and try not to burn my mouth too much. Need salt. Sprinkle a bit of seasoning in there, and once you got it where you want it, you just wanna set it aside till we're ready to build the sandwich. Okay, so to build this epic sandwich, we're gonna put down some homemade lemon mayonnaise. You could also use some store-bought stuff, but uh, you know, mayonnaise is easy to make and it tastes much better. Then we'll lay down some uh, crispy pork belly. Yeah, two looks good. Then to top it off, a nice little dollop of your braised cabbage. Maybe a little bit more. Mayonnaise on the top and cap it off. So, let's see how my version of Caspress Canoodle sandwich turns out. Mmm, this should be illegal. This is absolutely amazing. <laughs> this is good on so many levels. I can't explain. You have to try this. Traditionally, as I said before, you eat it with a salad or some soup, but you know, it's winter time, it's not salad weather. I really am not into soups, but this, this I can definitely get behind. It's good, right? <laughs>